And now we see Jesus has to face Pilate. And uh, that is, we're, we're looking at that from Mark chapter, uh, chapter 15. And we see Jesus going to the cross for you and me. We see the king on the cross. It is not every day that you see a king on the cross. So we get to see the king on the cross. The king dies and is buried. What a sad, sad day. So it's like they were accusing him of usurping power mm. which he did not have. And that means he was taking a, a seditious action. Mm. Claiming to be a king when there's what? Another yeah. king. They, 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 they put for him a crown of thorns on his head and they began to salute him. They smote him and they, they were spitting on him. They were even bowing their knees to worship him. Mm. That is what verse 19 says. And, and, and when you look at this, it says they mocked him, took off his purple from him and his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. Mm. This entire scene brings a Jesus whom, and, and it, it, it portrays to us a Jesus whom we should understand who he is. Mm. And in, in, in Mark chapter 15, I think the, 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 the key point over here is Jesus is the king of the Jews. Mm. And eventually they, they come to him and they tell him he saved others. Yeah. Why can he not save himself? Mm. In essence, they are now confessing that all the things that he has been doing, mm. he has been doing good things. Even if they were, they were saying he, he's, he's a bad fellow, but they knew that he was saving others. Mm. And they were calling him a savior. But they're asking him, savior, save yourself. The whole essence of killing Jesus was to silence him and get rid of him and the reason of doing it through crucifixion was to discredit him because from a Jewish lens, being hung on a tree was a sign that you are cast of God. Mm. And from a Roman sense, a people who are crucified were treasonous. Mm. Happy Sabbath, wherever you're joining us from and welcome again to our Sabbath school this day. It is so good to have you. We have come 13, 13 weeks. 13 weeks, yes? So 13 weeks later, what a blessing that this has been. It's been a great, great experience. We have our full panel this morning. We have our, our physical panel and we have our online panel because it's been an amazing, amazing 13 weeks. God has brought us this far and learning from the book of Mark. We started from Mark chapter 1. See how far God has brought us in Mark chapter 16. Last week when we finished, we finished with the darkness of the Friday night, the Friday evening when Jesus is crucified. We'll see where we get to today, but today we're looking at the risen Lord. Before we begin, we'll introduce ourselves, our panel, uh, we'll introduce themselves. My name is Masio Dora, we'll be your moderator this morning. It's great to have you. I will have my panelists introduce themselves and we'll go into prayer. Onsongo. My name is Onsongo Raphael. It's a wonderful pleasure to be with you. Happy Sabbath. My name is Sarah Finokema. I'm happy to be here. Amen. Happy Sabbath. My name is Jared Sanyara. I'm happy to be here so that we are blessed together. Amen. Let me go online. Let's start with you, Zef. It's amazing to have you back. You've been away for a few weeks, but it's really good to, that you resurface online. So would you like to introduce yourself to us, please? Um, happy Sabbath. I'm really happy to have joined you. Uh, again, and I hope we will be blessed by the discussion today. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Elder Chief? Chief is grateful to be joining you this day. Amen. And Sire? My name is Sire, and I'm honored to be among all of you guys. Amen. Onsongo, could you please pray for us today? Uh, let's believe and pray. Our kind and loving Father and Master, we thank you and praise your name for everything that you've done for us, dear Lord. 13 weeks you have led us and uh, lo and behold come to the end of this wonderful um, discourse that we've had as we've moved with you uh, through the guidance of the lesson through the book of Mark mm. and now dear Lord we call upon you once again to give us of that divine spirit that illuminated the m mind of Mark to pen down these words to once again be with us and guide us dear Lord even as we uh, consider this wonderful truth is our most humble prayer believing and trusting in you Amen Amen. 13 weeks later, last Sabbath, 
we stopped at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I can imagine, you know, we're told that at that point in time, as they went home, uh, the disciples had fled and left Jesus on his own. The women remained, and which were, for me was one of the most amazing things, that the women followed closely to Jesus through the whole process, from the, from the beginning till the end, and until they saw his body brought down by Joseph. The Bible actually says that the women observed where they laid him. They stayed with him even when the others fleed. And I can imagine as they went home, Mary and the other Mary and Salome, as they went home, they went home never knowing if they were going to see Jesus again. I can imagine as a mother what his mother felt, that this was the end of her son. She must have wondered, is this it? Is this where 33 years end? But who is God? This morning we look at the risen Lord and, and, and we're looking at Mark chapter 16. And it begins by saying he is risen. He's not in the tomb anymore. And um, a memory verse this morning comes from Mark chapter 16, verse 6, and it says, But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. If there was ever any good news, that must have been the most amazing news for this woman who on a Friday had left and had watched the Sabbath of such great sadness. As they came in the morning to anoint a body, they were coming to anoint a body. And behold, they find an angel who says, he is not here. He is reason. I wonder if they believed him. I wonder if they remembered that he had said, you will see me again. So this morning, the Mark started with, Mark chapter 1, 1 started with, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. Mark ends with Mark 16, 19, which says, then they saw the Lord, then the Lord was taken into heaven, sat down at the hand of God the Father. Jesus had come, he had done his, his job, he had finished his mission, and he went back to his father. What a way to finish things. What a way to finish things. We'll get into our lesson this morning. And this morning we'll look at the rejoicing in resurrection. What is this joy that gives us in this resurrection? And so this morning, as we get into our lesson, Rafa, I want to come to you because then we're saying we look at just the joy of this resurrection. I don't know how it feels. Actually, as I, les I read this lesson and thought of it as a mother, and imagine that if I had gone, if I had laid my son three days ago, and I, I mean, that was a Friday, so this is Sunday. If I had laid my son to death, I had watched them lynch my son. And coming in to be told that he is risen, I am wondering what joy this brings us in terms of why is it important that we re rejoice in resurrection? Why is, it, is, re is resurrection an important thing for the church? Mm, I think uh, it's a wonderful and, and deep question. Uh, I think it's a, it's a question that perhaps we could, uh, we, could, uh, we could discuss for the length of the, this discussion and, uh, and still not really understand. But uh, in, in essence, uh, it speaks to us of the power of the gospel. Mm. I think the resurrection is, is that which validates our faith. You know, if there was no resurrection, then Christ would simply have been another good man who was uh, affected by a bad world. The same, the, an archetypical story that has played out over, of, over time of, of uh, evil eventually overcoming good. But the, the resurrection tells us that um, there is power and the gospel is powerful beyond the grave. That he who uh, died, uh, he who was righteous, condemned uh, and, 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 and killed with the unrighteous, he who had done all these things to save us from our sins and from our iniquity, was ultimately uh, courageous, uh, successful, and, um, and uh, was able to be victorious uh, over death. Because I think uh, that one thing, that one, that one frontier, that last frontier uh, that man was yet to see conquered was death. Mm -hmm. And Christ, at his resurrection, tells us that uh, indeed he is the resurrection and the life. He tell, he, 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 he tell, uh, it almost speaks about the death of, the, of, 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 of an old life and the beginning of a new life. In fact, um, um, if you are going, going by what Sunday speaks about from the book of Mark 15, uh, verse 42, all the way to Mark 16 and verse 6, it, it almost uh, tries to tell us that um, the verity of his death 
we see Joseph of Arimathea going and asking for the body of Christ. And then Pilate, is, Pilate marvels that, has he already died so fast? You know, because the cross was, a, was an instrument of torture. He was supposed to die there slowly. But we find in Christ one who, who expired almost, he almost signed out in his own terms. After he says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, and, 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 and says that it is finished. And there, there he dies. And therefore, yeah, a centurion is taken and uh, is told to go and check and after they had, these secular powers have verified his death, they eventually allow Joseph of Arimathea to take the body of Christ. And uh, somewhere along the line in verse 47, we are told Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus beheld where he was laid. So one, one thing is clear that Christ had died, mm -hmm. verified by multiple parties, both secular and religious both family and friends, and Pilate himself and the centurion. And therefore, he, he rests on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. He rests on the Sabbath day because it's a preparation day. Uh, he rests in the grave eventually on the Sabbath day. And then finally, early uh, Monday morning, uh, rather Sunday morning, uh, my, uh, uh, my apologies for that. Mm -hmm. Mark uh, 16 and verse 1, it says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of, J of, of James and Salome brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him because of the Sabbath they couldn't they were not able to be able to anoint to do those, those preparations for, for the body for the dead uh, to preserve them but eventually now when they come the Bible records um, in verse 3 they were asking themselves who will roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher and when they looked they saw that the stone was rolled away for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted, they were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place uh, where they laid him. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this woman, the story continues as we shall see, uh, rejoice in the, in the resurrection. And, um, sad to say the resurrection has been misappropriated, has been misused in Christendom in that now people are now celebrating as the day of worship, uh, the day of the resurrection, which is Sunday, in place of the true Sabbath, which is the Saturday, which is the preparation day, the day in which, which in Christ himself, even in the grave, uh, observed by resting. He could have resurrected at any particular time, but he said this was the Sabbath and he rested. And early, the Bible records, early on Sunday morning, uh, I think uh, once the Sabbath uh, was done, Christ was ready to resurrect. And uh, lo, he emerges. And that is the beauty of the resurrection. The beauty of the resurrection speaks to the power of the gospel, the power of Christ, and it validates him as the Messiah. Because now, uh, not only has he, is he able to, to forgive our sins and, and, and to heal our maladies, he is also able to bring us back to life again. It speaks to us also of a spiritual, uh, of a spiritual application in that after we, have, uh, after we have walked in the world and we have done all these things that we have done, in Christ we can have a new beginnings. Mm. In Christ we can experience a spiritual resurrection, that which was dead uh, through sin and through iniquity, through transgression, through, uh, through habit. We can have, uh, habits can be broken. Mm. We can have, uh, we have power in Christ and we have that assurance that we can begin life again. We can begin life again. And therefore, as Christians, we rejoice in the resurrection. One poet says, it was Sunday and, and, and they were abusing and the disciples were disappointed. But lo and behold, Sunday was coming. Mm. And indeed, Sunday. Sunday did come. Mm. It speaks to us that we may be in a dark situation. It may, be, it may look gloomy, but in Christ, in the resurrection, in, when Sunday comes, Lo and behold, uh, there is power and there is new birth. And therefore, we can rejoice in the resurrection. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10 and verse 12, we are that, that, that rejoicing in the resurrection is typified. The memorial of this resurrection of Christ is through the example of baptism. Mm. Through baptism by immersion, the symbol of one dying through the, through the old life and uh, being buried in that watery grave and emerging, resurrected, in a new life uh, in Christ. And so, uh, indeed, there is a lot for the Christian to rejoice in the resurrection. Amen, amen. And that's if I want to come to you, because now referring to, uh, as, as, as we refer to this rejoicing of the resurrection, and it's very interesting because there are people who actually find it incredible that 
Christians believe in a risen Lord, as in they actually, and they wonder about the evidence of this resurrection for you. If somebody was going to ask you, what is the evidence as a Christian that Jesus actually rose based on the Bible and the story that we've been looking at? What would you say, for example? Uh, thank you very much. You know, they say we walk by faith and not by sight. But uh, there are people who say, until I have evidence, mm. I don't want to just believe on it. And so th th this actually answers that question. When you're talking about the resurrection, one thing I like about the resurrection is, you see, the resurrection is so serious to the extent that it cannot be a story that was coined up. Let me explain this. If you look at the themes that run through the synoptic gospels, walk through Matthew, Matt, Luke, and John, you find there are some stories that are only found by one person. The prodigal son, as wonderful as the story is, only Luke talks about the prodigal son. Even the issue of the last day events, talking about the signs of the time and there shall be pestilences, wars, and rumors of war. Beloved John doesn't even talk about it. But when you come to the resurrection, everyone talks about the resurrection. You see, when, when you all sit somewhere and an event has occurred and you have to write things, you only write the things you consider to be critical. Everyone wrote about the resurrection, taking the resurrection to be very serious. That's one thing. But now you see, uh, somebody can say, okay, you people coined this story together. You just sat down and came up with this idea. Now, look at it. The question is, uh, first of all, this is what we say, evidence that demands a verdict. I had somebody say that. This is an evidence that it demands that you tell us what do you think about this. The songwriter uh, said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, it is a wonderful song. But I like the part that says, an empty grave is there to prove. Mm. In other words, this is one of those things that we don't just say that, okay, believe is the reason. Yes, but there is an empty grave to prove that. Now, for us to appreciate the empty grave, let's go back to the point that there are people who didn't want the empty grave. Yeah. Because the empty grave was going to be evidence. And that is why when you look at the story of the resurrection, to what level did the Pharisees and the priests go to avoid this empty grave scenario? Matthew 27, 62 says, Now, the next day, the day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver, while he was yet alive, said, After three days, I will rise again. Now, if a liar tells you that he will resurrect, why are you worried? then they would not have been worried if this was a deceiver talking. Mm. It could be that they were worried that this guy is not a deceiver. Mm -hmm. Let's just continue reading. He says, Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, mm -hmm. say to the people, he's risen from the dead, so that the last night is worse than the first. Mm -hmm. Pilate even gave them a watch. Pilate gave them a hundred soldiers to go and guard. In other words, when you're looking at the story of the empty grave, you, you have to understand that there are 100 plus witnesses who have seen that the grave is empty. Mm. Now, we, we find ourselves in a problem here. If, and, and you must also appreciate that the empty grave the, 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 was actually a question that was asked by everyone. The Pharisees feared that the grave may be empty on the third day. That's why they asked, let's guard it. Mm. In fact, they even had a massive stone placed there. Now, the question of the stone, when you read in the book of Mark, I, I, I was thrilled to understand that Mark actually captured this in a question. You see, in, in John, John will talk about uh, Jesus, Jesus telling them, roll the stone away. Mm -hmm. That is when Lazarus was dead. Mm -hmm. Now, the tombs normally were covered with a stone, and there is a question that the women ask in verses 3 of Mark 16, they say among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? Mm -hmm. In other words, they, they're asking a question, 
that there is a stone. Who is going to roll it away? Now you see, certain things are going to happen here. If the stone is rolled away, it must have been rolled away either by this, uh, what are they called? Um, the soldiers, or it must have been brought away by a supernatural power. And now, if it's a supernatural power, then we now know that this resurrection is a serious thing. Amen. Now, the next part is, they're saying that the disciples stole the body. Mm -hmm. this, this is captured well in the book of uh, Matthew, where the, 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 the priest uh, created this narration. But you see, if they stole the body, the question is, why have the thieves not been arrested? Mm -hmm. Why were they set free if you know they stole the body? And if they stole the body, then the Roman soldiers who were there should have actually been arrested for allowing or abetting a crime. Now, here is where we are having a challenge. And now, when somebody is going to ask the question that, can you give us evidence that Jesus resurrected? But I'm going to say there were witnesses. The Roman soldiers who went to guard the place turned out to be witnesses because mm. there's an empty tomb. And now we have the women who turn out to be witnesses mm. that there's an empty tomb. And now we have more than sufficient evidence. Now, if Jesus was not risen, his body would have been in the tomb. You know about the pharaohs mm. and the pyramids. Don't you think people would have been going to the place? Right now, people are going to Israel. What are they seeing? an empty tomb. Mm. Now, if we are to say anything about the evidence of the resurrection, because mm. as Raphael has put it, the resurrection is actually what our faith is built on. It shows that we serve a God who is able to even overcome death. Mm -hmm. This is a serious thing. The stone was rolled away, evidence, empty tomb. Amen, Elder Chief. That is really, really, it's quite profound. Serafim, I want to come to you because I love the fact that the women are witnesses. These women have followed Jesus. I, I find it amazing that even when the disciples, the men, no offense to our brothers, the, the men had been with Jesus for all these years. And when it comes to the very end, they all ran away. Actually, last Sabbath, we realized that leaving all, including your own clothes, to run away from Jesus. But the women stayed. And God is so good that on Sunday morning, the women become the witness to this empty tomb. Talk to us about the women. The women, God uses them in a mighty way. Amen. In the book of Luke chapter 16, starting from verse 2, the Bible says, and the very and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre mm. at the rising of the sun. And they said unto themselves, who shall roll us away the stone mm. from the door of the sepulchre? Amen. These women were coming to crown their sorrow. But God had a different plan for them. God was meeting them to quench their sorrow. They had accepted, you know what? Our God has died, our savior, our only hope has died. Let us go and anoint him. Mm. But when they get there, they approach slowly. What do they expect? They expect death and an impossibility. Mm. They expect their savior dead and laying down there. The second thing they expect is a great mighty stone. And as Chief read for us, they walked, they advanced towards the tomb asking, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? Mm -hmm. They expected an impossibility. A heavy stone well guarded by a hundred soldiers. But who is like unto our God? Amen. They approach there, and instead of death, they find life. Amen. Instead of an impossibility, they find the impossibility removed. Actually, we are told there was an earthquake. And you know, I'm left to wonder. Mm -hmm. I'm left to wonder. I mean, people didn't hear this earthquake. Mm. The earthquake that literally shook the tomb 
indeed removed the stone and we are told at his resurrection many were resurrected mm. and they went outside there to do what? To witness. Yeah. My question is, didn't they hear the earthquake? Mm. And today, I'm left to ask, when God is doing great and mighty things in people's lives, mm. and there are earthquakes in people's lives, causing impossibilities to roll away, what is your testimony? Amen. What is your testimony? And as we move on, we are told they looked and they saw that the stone had been rolled away. Why? It is something to be recorded up on about because it was very, the Bible tells us it was very great. And proceeding on, we are told something amazing. Entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white linen a garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not afraid. Ted, he seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way and tell. Amen. Go your way and tell. These women, in the past, we have seen Jesus Christ telling doing miracles, performing miracles, and telling after he has performed miracles, telling the people, you know what? don't tell anyone. You know, resurrecting the daughter of Jairus, telling them, don't tell anyone. Why? Because his time had not yet come. His time to be glorified and exalted as our Messiah had not yet come. But now, the time had come for the testimony to be advanced. And he, here they are told, go but now. In the past, they were told, keep quiet. Right now, they are told, but now go your way and tell. Mm -hmm. Friends, the time to witness has come. Mm -hmm. The time to tell people about our God has come. Mm -hmm. And the message is, but now go your way and tell. Mm -hmm. Going your way could be going to your place of work. Going your way could be going to your home where people are not Adventists. Going your way could be going outside there to the mission field and tell people that Christ is resurrected. With this bidding, what are you doing? Are you like the women who proceeded and they went and they started telling or are you sitting down comfortable? Remember, I'm reminded in the book of Ephesians chapter six, as we are told about the articles of the armor, one of them is feet shod with the gospel of peace. Do you know our witness is an armor? What are you doing with the bidding? But now go your way and tell. Amen. Go your way and tell. I wonder who we are telling. Saya, let me come to you. Because in... in when, he, when the women are told by the angel that he's not here, so stop pick, seeking the living among the dead. When the women are told that, they go. But, you, uh, but shortly afterwards, at that point actually, they were so afraid that they kept silent. But shortly afterwards, Jesus appears to Mary. And I want us to look at Jesus' appearance to Mary and to others. I am so blessed the fact that Jesus appeared to Mary first. And it would be interesting to hear what you, you, your thoughts on that. And that is Mary Magdalene, the one he had delivered the seven demons out of. What a merciful God we serve. If we could talk to us about him appearing to Mary and to others as evidence of his resurrection. Chief said something very important. He said Pilate had kept a guard, a, a watch, which is like a hundred soldiers. Other, other, other tomb. And when you read the story in Matthew 28, uh, when they, after the resurrection, the guard goes ahead to the chief priest and they fabricate the story that Jesus was stolen. And so imagine a um, hundred soldiers are going out. They have the backing of power and they have the backing of Rome behind them and they're having a head start to go out and begin on this campaign of disinformation. So heaven has to um, retaliate. Paul will later on 
underscore in First Corinthians 15 that Christianity rises and falls on the veracity of the resurrection. If Christ did not leave that tomb, then our belief is dead. But if Christ indeed was crucified, died, buried, and resurrected, then we have reason to believe. So in this particular window uh, we are looking at, things are crucial. And so the call for um, witnesses to the resurrection cannot be an individual. Christ has to come out to them in a way that is unquestionable. And so he does. And he does it in a way that, one, defies the traditions of the time. And two, does it in a way that um, preempts any idea that this was uh, a cooked or a fabricated story. The testimony of women in those days was not considered valid. Mm. Okay, but the gospel account says the first witnesses to the resurrection were women. There's a whole squad of women who went and saw the empty tomb. And then in specific was a woman like Mary Magdalene. If you were hooking up the gospel story, you would A, not make women to be the prime or number one witnesses, and B, you would certainly not make Mary Magdalene to be the first woman um, to have seen Christ because even the way she is described, Magda Magdalene just means she came from a place called Magdala. And then the identifying characteristic outside of her geography was her previous encounter with demons. She had seven evil spirits removed from her. So the fact that the gospel is just upfront that, hey, um, the first witness was a woman and the very first person to see, behold, Jesus was a woman who had been um, exorcised of seven mm -hmm. spirits shows that for the immediate audience, this was not a cooked story. Because if this was going to be fabricated, mm -hmm. they would have chosen more, quote-unquote, appropriate witnesses. Mm -hmm. But just looking back to Christ's ministry, he had said, he who has been forgiven much loves much. Amen. So it is, it is significant that the women are the ones who remained to A, see where Jesus was being laid, and B, that the first to visit the tomb. But you see in Mary's side something even more additional. While the others were moving away, Mary still lingers even a bit longer. And it is to her that Christ then chooses um, to appear. Um, two seconds of my preacher side and ask, what are you lingering or which places are you lingering around? Because lingering is a sign of affection. When uh, a, a young man is interested in a damsel, what he tries to do is to linger where the woman is in the hope that there could be chance for interaction or lingering, lingering means an unwillingness to depart. So maybe even after receiving the information from the angel, has still an unwillingness to depart. She wants to encounter Jesus, and we are happy that Christ does honor that. And then the account in Mark says, when they left the tomb, they went and told um, the disciples. To borrow a little bit of Kenyanese, they treated it, Kama stories are Jabba, like these were just, they felt like these stories were too tall a tale to yeah. believe, they were fantastical for them. But Christ didn't stop there. He went to the road to Emmaus. It's a very interesting thing. Emmaus is a short distance away. In in the appearance of the tomb, um, Christ had told them, tell these guys to go to Galilee. And instead, there's Cleophas and team heading to Emmaus, which is a nearby village, and it's opposite the direction they needed to go. And Christ appears. And in his appearance, it wasn't just some mystical, mythical thing. No, he conversed with them. He taught them. He speaks to them, and eventually when he sits to break bread with them, their eyes are opened. Mm -hmm. Not because just of what Christ is about to do, but because of the entire exposition from Scripture about who he was, the nature of his mission, and the misunderstanding they had. Mm -hmm. After that, he appears to the entire eleven, and to disabuse anything about spiritualism, mm -hmm. what he does is he asks for fish, and he eats. He tells, and later on, you come a week later and tell Thomas, touch me and fill me. Mm -hmm. And then later on, according to the account of Paul, Paul says he appeared to 500 others. Why is Christ doing this? Mm -hmm. Remember where we've begun? The counter narrative that is already afoot is very strong and has the backing of both the temple and the palace. And so Christ has to present himself in very um, unquestionable ways to 
his disciples and the people who would soon believe because this is going to be the tide they're going to be swimming under. Mm -hmm. They say when they learn to fly um, without resting, you need to learn to shoot without missing. Mm -hmm. So when you see the disciples eventually changing from being the weak, whimsical, running away individuals they were on Thursday night and on Friday and becoming the bold individuals willing to die mm -hmm. um, for the veracity of the story that Christ was risen and did appear to them. Mm -hmm. It is one strong evidence of Christ's resurrection because people can, you know, live up for a lie for a while, mm -hmm. but people giving up their lives for a lie and doing it en mass like the Christians did is not um, verify is not is not is not in the nature of human beings. So to s summarize it, it is Christ rose and he rose indeed and he did it in a way that it preserved a body of evidence for us, beginning with the women and with the multitude. Amen, amen, and indeed he rose, and there was evidence and witnesses. Elder Manyara, I want to talk, come to you, because we've always talked about, I know, I mean, myself included, you know, the commission, the Great Commission, we, anytime someone talks about the Great Commission, we, talk, we think about Matthew 28. But here we see Jesus, after rebuking them for doubting, because along the way, you know, every time they were told that, that the Savior had been seen, they did not believe. It's very interesting that the question of doubt and unbelief is very, is, is very greatly woven in, in Mark 16. And after the Lord has rebuked them for not believing, he then tells them to go and tell every creature. He didn't just say human beings. That's very interesting. He says every creature. So he says, go and broadcast it wild, widely. The Lord has called you and I, Elder, to go. How are we going? And talk to us about when that commission sends them out to go. Uh, there's something very interesting in this lesson. Mm. Uh, there's someone I've listened to, and the titles have always been, Where are the men? So, during the resurrection, <laughs> where were the men? <laughs> All along, we see women mm. going to the tomb mm. to see Jesus. Where were the men? Mm. Then, something very interesting. When the women are given the message to bring to the disciples, they don't believe. Mm. That's the other funny thing. Yeah. Now, in this country, there's one community where they say, you can't believe what a woman says until two weeks are over. So I don't know whether they were there from this community. <laughs> it, it, it is so amazing. Uh, they were wondering, uh, reason? No, no. These women must be dreaming. This is the greatest um, challenge. The challenge of unbelief. That's the greatest problem that we have. And the reason even why many of us do not witness is because of unbelief. And Jesus had to start by addressing that problem. Because if we could have given them a commission, probably they could have gone without even doing what? Believing it. They, they just say, they, they say, we were just told. Eh? He told us. Eh? Yeah. So he had to rebuke that. And so that they can understand that whatever they are going to take is what they believe in. And I thank God that even though we despise women, women have a great ability of believing. And when they were told, they just believed and delivered that message. Amen. Now Jesus, after he rebuked the disciples, he tells them to go out and preach this good news of the risen Savior to every creature. Mm -hmm. And now, something interesting. He didn't leave it there. The issue is, he tells them, he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned. Yeah. Now Jesus is reminding them that the
the only people who will be baptized are those who do what? Believe. So, they had to believe. Then those they tell must also do what? Believe. And now, he gave them an evidence of the power that he gave them. That their mission was to be accompanied by great signs. The, in Jesus' name, they were to cast out demons. Mm -hmm. They were to speak in t new tongues. They were to take up serpents. Mm -hmm. And if they drank anything deadly, mm -hmm. it will be by no means hurt them. They were to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Now, this aspect of science mm -hmm. in mission is something very controversial. Mm -hmm. Many are times, we believe that those who perform science mm -hmm. are the only ones who have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And if we do not see, then that person has not been sent by the Holy Spirit. Something so interesting is that this has pushed people, those who preach, to look for ways of making others believe by having fake miracles. And many of us have been victims of this. Many of believers have become victims of these signs. And some people are so crafty. And you know, when you are used by the devil, because we know at the end of time, he might even cause fire to come from heaven as a sign. Mm. Now, many have been misled by these signs. But something interesting is that Jesus gave an assurance that signs were to accompany the disciples' work. And that was for a reason, for others to believe. Now for us as Christians, it can also happen to us. We can also go out with the message and many, many things happen. I've heard of cases where people went somewhere on a mission and something amazing happened. I was told of a story of a, a preacher who went on a journey and he ran out of fuel and he didn't know. But he was able to drive for 20 kilometers without fuel. What do we call that one? It is a miracle. I know many people who have gone out. They need a certain provisions. Probably they lacked transport. And God provided in a very miraculous way. Others went somewhere. I remember from this pulpit, there's a preacher who told us that he went somewhere and found someone on the ground deadly sick. And they prayed for that person and he got healed. So, that is a prerogative of Jesus. When he sees fit, he can allow great signs to accompany. But there are also times when Miracles may not happen. Yeah? When they don't happen, does it mean God has forsaken us? No, he hasn't forsaken us. Amen. There are times when God wants us just a message to us, it is. Mm. And it creates a change in people. Amen. And another interesting thing is that sometimes even we who go out on mission mm -hmm. may suffer. Mm. And people may even ask, like they were asking Jesus. He saved others. He can't save himself. Mm. Yeah. They say this person has pre been praying for people. Mm. He can't pray for himself. Yeah. There are times when that happens. So that it serves as our testimony for people mm. to believe Christ. Amen. Something that we learn from this is that... Um, for us to go out. You cannot go out unless 
you have believed. Because you cannot tell others to believe what you don't believe. Amen. Yes, Amen. that is very critical for us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has promised to be with us unto the end of, of the time. world. Amen. Very important, and we must be confident mm -hmm. that whenever we go out and we have asked for his accompaniment, he will surely accompany us because he has promised. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Zef, this is a story of hope, is it not? It is a story of hope. I want to come to you. Okay, um, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mercy. Um, I'm learning a lot from this uh, lesson. And also, um, just to uh, uh, do a recap on what we've been learning about um, uh, the book of Mark, about Jesus. You know, Jesus came uh, and showed us uh, some lessons that we can actually uh, learn um, about God and, 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 and his character. You know, Jesus came uh, to show us love through healing, you know, through um, uh, healing. We've seen him healing uh, uh, the blind. We've seen him uh, healing the sick. We've seen him even raising the dead to life. He also came feeding. We've seen him feeding 4,000 people. We've seen him feeding 5,000 people. We've also uh, heard in the book of Mark of Jesus even feeding the bread of life, teaching people uh, ways to, 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 to get to heaven. And we also have seen Jesus demonstrating love through teaching in parables, you know, uh, and even teaching his disciples, who is the greatest. You remember that is 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 also shown love through influencing, you know, uh, people uh, to have or to think in a certain way. You know, um, the disciples really expected that Jesus would actually um, lead them to or politically. They actually had a mind that he was actually a political leader and that he would save uh, the people of Israel from the Roman yoke, but, but, but he taught them otherwise. And so he influenced them into becoming uh, or thinking in the right way. Um, we have seen him witnessing. We've seen Jesus prophesying on uh, what is to happen, especially one that is critical on our faith, uh, for our faith. Uh, the destruction of Jerusalem. And we've seen Jesus demonstrating love through mentorship, through even teaching us some of some of the topics that are really uh, critical in our time, that uh, from marriage and divorce, even paying taxes, quite relevant to us today. And then I see this teaching Jesus who is mentoring and doing all these things to demonstrate the love of God to us, uh, towards us, also coming to die on the cross you see uh, now his death on the cross really was um, a hope killer for the disciples and the rest of the people who had deemed him to be the savior of the world and now him dying you know must have killed their hope but this we know that this was actually the part where he played uh, the role of being a savior without his death on the cross then we are not saved he had to be a lamb that was led to the slaughter a sacrificial lamb that would die for our sin and all this being a summary of what is happening in the book of mark we see also uh, of course we've had uh, many religions and many other people not wanting to believe that jesus actually died on the cross and some of them actually very a neighboring religion that maybe some of us know about believe that they switched jesus for someone else or maybe a brother or a disciple or or another person so that that person who died they cannot relate to the idea that actually god can die which we all know that this is a mystery but he had to die on the cross to save us from sin and so there was this 
part where now, as the, as the book of Mark is ending, is a hope killer for the disciples. And that hope that they had, that they have a savior, they had someone who probably, even if will not save them politically, but will actually lead them to a light that would um, uh, uh, take them to heaven mm. or to a light, or it will be their, their, their influence them to something that is positive, but now he dies. So after dying, then uh, we see him, we see in the book of Mark, Mark as it ends, that is Mark chapter 16, mm-hmm. and that is uh, 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 from verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Uh, what a way of reviving hope that was dead by his death on the cross. You know, um, uh, but now we see him rising and representing us, representing the disciples at the right hand of God Almighty. And and this I see is also a revival of, um, of of hope. You know, Christ is risen from the dead. You know, such a sweet message to under to 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 the disciples after they had. Uh, being so afraid and hopeless by seeing him dying on the cross. Really, um, so uh, this, including now Peter and all the disciples, must have been a message that was very difficult for them to um, come to terms with. They must have been very uh, surprised that Jesus would actually come back to death, come back from death, and that he would live again and sit at the right hand of God. Yeah, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Zef. As my panelists, you think about your closing remarks. Our dear viewers, we've come really to the end of an amazing, amazing book, the book of Mark. As we look at the end, I mean, and very quickly look at the summary of this week, we're looking at rejoicing in the, in, in the resurrection because our hope is not in vain so long as Jesus resurrected. It is a reminder of our hope for eternal life, that we shall live again. And when the Bible says that even though we die, we shall live again, what a hope it is. The stone rolled away. God is the God who rolls away our stones. And you can imagine when the women said, who will roll away the stone for us? And when they get there, they find a stone that has already been rolled away. There's a God who is rolling away your obstacles. And the things in your lives that are stones that have blocked your life. But there's a God who is able to roll your stone away. Who is rolling away your stone? There's a God who is able to roll away your stones. Do not be afraid. He has your back. And he is rolling away your stones stones, the women at the tomb. As I, you know, in addition to what Zeph was saying about why Jesus would say, go and tell the disciples and Peter, because remember Peter had just denied his Lord and he was so broken when he saw, he denied and not only does he deny, but he runs away from his savior. And so you can imagine when they say, go tell the disciples who ran away by, by the way, as Elder was talking about, where were the men? The men ran away, Elder, just so you know. And as they ran away, including Peter. So when Jesus says, go tell the disciples, and Peter, it was hope. It was an assurance of a God whose love does not change. My beloved brother or sister, if you are struggling with your sin and wondering, will the Lord take me back? Can the Lord take me back after what he knows about me? There's a God who is saying, go tell the disciples who ran away from him. And Peter, who denied him three times, that I will be in Galilee. Beloved of God, there is nowhere you can go that is too far for the Lord to redeem. Come back to the Lord. He promised that after resurrection, he will be in Galilee where he had told you that he will be. Meet him there. Finally, the, as he appears to Mary and to others, and the one thing that he, 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 
what does he do? He, he, um, what, what was he doing when he was rebuking his disciples for unbelief? It is because when he says believe, believe in this case means to fully put your trust in his word, to bank on what he has said, that what Jesus said he would do, he will do, my friend. You can put your money on what Jesus has said about you. So believe. And finally, brothers and sisters, go and tell the whole world. Go and tell every creature. Go and tell it out. No longer is Jesus saying to keep silence. Now he says, go and tell everybody because the Savior has risen. We've come to the end. And my panelists, your closing remarks. I'd like to start with you. Mm, I'd like to address a, a, a theme that has, um, has, 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 been, uh, um, has been mentioned here about women at the tomb. I think uh, looking at history and borrowing from Paul writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, wherein he speaks and says that um, uh, when sin first entered this world, it entered through the woman being deceived. Mm. And I find it also almost uh, Christ being there for women who had borne the brunt mm. of, 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 of the disappointment and of all those things that, are, that had happened, that foremost even at the, at, at when, when it comes to matters resurrection, mm. matters salvation, the woman is there, redeemed once again. Mm. To the extent that even uh, when, 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 when God is now looking for a vessel with which to, to, to embody his church, he says it's the woman. Mm. He says, and therefore he, he, when, he, when, when the women are there, they're told, go and tell the rest. Mm. And also, in essence, speaking to us also as a church, uh, as we find ourselves in the woman uh, to go and indeed tell the world, tell the world that indeed Christ has come. And so uh, I, f I find that uh, Christ understands even those uh, historical injustices or historical uh, shames or historical um, ways in which women have be have may have been looked uh, at in society and even Generally, even uh, for a society that hardly uh, considered a numbered, uh, numbered women, that Christ uh, and his disciples, you can see, the, the, the women that are around Christ were so powerful that even the authors of the gospel uh, jot them down, not only saying there was a woman, but even by their names. They are, we see their characters. We see, the, we, see, we, see, we see them as persons, and, and, and they are powerful. And so I believe um, it is part of the gospel story uh, where Christ writes even the stories uh, of men and women of the past. Amen. Mm. Seraphim. The reason, Lord, God has not changed. His resurrection is an impossible event that he may be called the God of impossibilities. I do not know what in your dark corner is dead and appears may never possess life again. I believe this same Jesus, his power has not dwindled. He can also resurrect that dead, completely dead thing in your life. And I pray that as he resurrects it, he will point you to himself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Elder. Thank you very much. Uh, throughout this quarter, we have seen the life of Jesus in the eyes of Mark. And at the end of this, the only question that we ask ourselves do we believe what Mark is saying? Mm -hmm. Do we believe that Jesus came? Mm -hmm. He taught us. He died for us. Mm -hmm. He resurrected and went to heaven. Mm -hmm. And right now is sitting at the right hand of God. Amen. And in the heavenly sanctuary, is interceding for us. Mm -hmm. And he has promised to be with us until the end of the age. Mm -hmm. We know the events that will take place. All the way to the little time of trouble, the greater time of trouble, and then finally the second coming. Mm. Do we believe all that? Mm. If we do, Jesus is bidding us. We go and tell others. Thank you. Amen. Let me come to you online. Uh, Zef, your closing remarks. Um, thank you. Um, I'll just finish with a song from Matt Maha, Christ is Risen. Mm. Uh, it says, let no one caught in sin remain inside the lie of inward shame. Mm. We fix our eyes upon the cross and run to him who showed us great love. Mm. 
and bled for us. Really, he bled for us. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise, and come and rise up from the grave. Mm. O oh, death, where is your sting? Amen. O hell, where is your victory? O church, come stand in the light. The glory of God has defeated the night. Mm. O death, where is your sting? O hell, where is your victory? Mm. O church, come and stand in the light. Our God is not dead. He is alive. He is alive. Amen. Mm. Elder Chief. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, something that captured my attention when you were asking why Peter. And uh, I, I, I think I, I am excited at the fact that the person who disappointed Jesus mm. by failing to live up to the life that he was expected to live up to, mm. God was still able to go and look for him. I mean, you know, Peter would have really felt like, have I fallen down from the ranks of the PJJ and now I have become just a normal one? Then Jesus says, go look for the disciples, but look for Peter. I want Peter to just know that I still love okay. him. Okay. And, and this goes to any of us who feels like you disappointed God so badly. Just know one thing, the reason Savior is interested in you mm. like he was interested when you were closely following. Okay. There's so many of us who may have been vibrant in the faith mm. and, and, and something happens in the middle of the way and you, you, you things don't seem to go so nicely. Just know one thing, Jesus is saying that, okay, let this uh, Sabbath school lesson be spoken to so-and-so and and be spoken to this person, but also look for my daughter whom I trusted in before. And and, and that encouraged me. Look for Peter. If you are a Peter out there who has disappointed the Lord, just know one thing. He is very specific. Thank you. Amen. Sire. The, The Gospel of Mark is a good portrayal of the conflict between we have as human beings between God's power and God's character. Mm. The best place it's seen is at the door of the tomb. The disciples standing and looking at the cross on Friday had, were the same disciples who'd seen Christ resurrect Lazarus, who'd seen him resurrect um, Jairus' daughter, who'd seen him feed so they, um, the, the thousand, so he, they knew he had power. But they had failed to understand that when it comes to the administration of God's power, he is guided by his character. Mm. And in this case, his character had chosen one thing, that he would lay down his life to save you and me. Mm. But when you come to the same door of the tomb on Sunday morning, it's a totally different story. And so two quick things as I finish my experience with the book of Mark is one is that God is to remind each one, including myself, is that God will always exercise his power guided by his character for the good of his people. Mm. And then number two is though life is lived forward, we live from day to day, Mm. it is understood looking backwards. Mm. When the disciples finally sat and they traced how God had led them from their calling in Galilee all the way to the commissioning, um, um, all the way to the commi- the Great Commission, then did the dots join. Mm-hmm. There are many points in their journey that the dots did not seem to make sense, but they had at least put some measure of confidence in God. So similarly for us, as we live our lives looking forward, we need to trust God's character, even at times though we may not understand how he uses or exercises his power, we do know one thing for sure, that we are living our lives forward and the dots will make sense as they're looking backwards. But we can trust it all because the hands in whose our life is in is one whose character is consistent even when we don't fully comprehend his exercise of power. God bless. (sighs) Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. My dear viewers, we have come to the end of the book of Mark. 13 weeks later, I hope Jesus has changed your life. Now you know you can trust him. Now you know that he's a God of second chances. He gave John Mark a second chance. He's giving Peter a second chance and his disciples many, many other chances. He can give you a second chance. 
May the Lord God bless you. Next week, you are joined by a different team. We pray for them that the Lord would use them to, to speak to you through the book of John. Themes in the book of John. We are continuing with the themes of Jesus Christ so that we can never say that we do not get a chance to know this Jesus that we are talking about. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless your families. My dear panelists, you've been an amazing panel and, and, and it's been great to work with you. Our online panel, may the Lord God bless you wherever you are, bless your families. And we will see you when we see you when God gives us an opportunity. In the meantime, if we do not meet this side of heaven, let's be there on that sea of glass because the Lord has made it possible for us. Thank you to the technical team. May the Lord God bless you for all your work and sacrifice. May he remember your labor of love. Until next Sabbath, God bless you in Jesus' name shall we pray. Father, thank you. This is such a powerful lesson reminding us that Jesus is risen. That the Lord is no longer dead. The Savior has risen, giving us hope for today and tomorrow. Be with us today, Lord. May these words be written in our hearts that there is still hope for each and every one of your children. That for those who believe, they will be saved. That's all you've said, Lord, that we may believe in this gospel of Jesus Christ. Be with us. Bless our dear panelists wherever they are. And as they move on to endeavor into other things, may the Lord God be with them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.